Our next guest is the co-founder and CEO of Paris-based AI startup Mistral. It's uh, French President um, Ma Emmanuel Macron uh, spoke to me last uh, month, and he called this man that we're about to introduce an example of French genius. Joining us in an exclusive interview uh, right now is Mistral CEO and uh, founder Arthur Mench. And I should say, this is your first time on television. It is. So welcome uh, to it. Uh, don't worry about all the cameras. But um, I'm curious, before we even get into the AI of it all, given your offices, I think, are right that way, I think, where we are. How has is, how is this whole Olympic experience changed what's going on? I mean, is anybody working this week? Yeah, people are working. Uh, it's been a, they had a hard time to actually cross the Seine, but uh, we made sure they could do it and come to the office. Um, what do you think, by the way, of the idea that the French president is calling you the French genius? I think it's a bit of an overstatement. We've been doing our best, but uh, it's very kind of him. Um, you made a big deal with Microsoft uh, earlier this year. Where do you think, I mean, just so the audience understands where uh, Mistral sits, where you think OpenAI sits, where you think Google sits, Anthropic, if you were to sort of r rank how things are looking right now, I mean, Llama, uh, Meta just came out with theirs. In terms of these big, large language models, who's got the, who's at the top and how, how's it going to play out? So there's a, only a few Frontier AI companies that are working on making best, the best models, the best uh, AI models, and we're one of, the, one of them, and we're the only startup, basically, at that point. Uh, we're working on uh, being very independent uh, from the cloud, uh, and so we're offering to developers, which is really our number one customer, uh, the possibility of deploying wherever they want, so on every cloud, and that's why Microsoft, Google, Amazon are also partners of us for distribution. And when, when you, though, think about where, I mean, sort of what your model can do compared to what these other models can do, what, what's the distinction? Well, the distinction is that we offer very deep access to developers so that they can customize the model, so that they can build differentiation for the applications they are making for their own customers. And in that respect, it's very different from uh, what is proposed by others, which is proposed as APIs, so interfaces that are centralized. We promote a decentralized approach where developers have full access to the technology. There's a big debate between these open source and closed source models. How big a deal is that debate? Uh, we have been promoting open source as the one way to make the, the technology go faster, the technology be safer, because there's more scrutiny on it. Uh, there's been some debate in the US, in the EU, on how fast it should go. We've been advocating, along with Meta, for instance, that uh, open source models were safer, were actually better for uh, wider adoption of the technology right. and safer adoption. One of the, of the things you hear from the folks who run Anthropic or Sam Altman, who runs ChatGPT, is that there's a danger in open source, that if the bad guys get access to this stuff, they can do things that, uh, that they otherwise couldn't, and that it, it makes it almost too easy for bad guys to do bad things. It's actually easier for a bad guy to access APIs, centralized APIs, and to actually do bad things. And we haven't seen any bad usage of the open source models that we've been releasing. Everything that we've seen was, has been positive. It's been positive for safety research, also understanding the limits of the models. And so we still believe that this is the safest way to go forward. Speak to this issue. It appears that one of the, the big question marks is about competition in, in AI and just broadly in tech. You are a startup, and you are one of the few that are succeeding that are not one of the biggest of the big. Why are you able to do that? Part of that's a fundraising issue, I think. But, but more broadly, how much is it about capital being able to, being able to deploy capital to buy NVIDIA chips effectively? It's about capital, and we have access to capital. So, it, it's, uh, so in that respect, it's been fine for us. Uh, it's also about talent. Uh, and there, uh, we got started very quickly. We, we, it's an advantage to be here because there's a lot of talent concentration, especially on the junior side. And the good thing about AI is that you don't need to have very big teams to actually succeed and do interesting things. You, have, you need to have like teams of 10 that are very focused. And uh, this is something that we've right. succeeded to do. So but when people say, in the end, there's going to be three or four winners and they're all going to be big companies, do you believe that? We don't believe that. It's a turning point in technology, and every turning point in technology offers opportunities. Uh, it's actually uh, not that costly, and we've, show, we've shown it, to build competitive models and to make uh, competitive offers to developers, and we'll be continuing to do it. So we really believe we have an opportunity. We've shown last year that we had leveraged that opportunity. In the United States and also in Europe, but in the U.S., the FTC is now looking at some of the big, biggest companies that have done partnerships uh, with folks like you uh, and OpenAI and others uh, and Anthropic and said, well, are these partnerships really the equivalent of acquisitions? What, what do you say to that? 
Well, we've seen some form of consolidation on the market recently. Uh, we are not concerned about it, but we've been interacting with antitrust uh, authorities from various countries because there is effectively a risk of regulatory capture of monopolies. And we, uh, we started that company uh, to, to uh, offer an alternative to the, to the monopoly that might be uh, established. Right. Okay, uh, final question. This is, this is a biggie because we're here in France and there's a reputation, just so you know, in the, back in the U.S., uh, that, you know, uh, the U.S. is a very free market capitalistic system that's created some of the great tech companies and that Europe has struggled to create great tech companies. Uh, Spotify is one of them. I think yours may be another. But what do you think of that perspective and view? We think that this is at the turning point. Uh, we're seeing a very big AI ecosystem in Paris, in London, in Germany, in Poland. All of these uh, countries are participating to the effort. Obviously, we got started in tech a little later than the US, uh, but we have talent, uh, we have uh, ambition, uh, we have uh, willpower, and we'll make it happen. And do you think that's a shift? But is that a, a shift not just in tech, but in sort of the economic force here in Paris? I think there has been a shift yet yeah, toward more ambition, toward more entrepreneurship, uh, and a realization that we had some uh, unique competence in tech that we should leverage in-house, and there is the opportunity, and this is the opportunity we're trying to leverage.